AISD is transitioning away from using the Google Cloud Assignment Submission Tool in Blend as it is being phased out by Canvas by fall of 2021. Previously known as Google Course Kit, the Google Assignment External Submission Tool was created by Google and it provides many benefits to teachers and students. For example, the files that a teacher provides in assignment are given to each student as a copy and uniformly saved to a blend course folder in the student's Google Drive. Teachers automatically have edit rights on each file and can provide feedback on the live Google Docs even before the student submits. The use of Google Assignment also means that we can avoid using the online submission tool and the many confusing tabs that students may be seeing. And another benefit would be that students will rarely need to use the share button to directly share a document with a teacher. The submitting of a student work, the communication with teachers, and ease of resubmitting for mastery learning all make assignment a strong submission tool. So let's create an example of an assignment in Canvas that uses the Google Assignment External Submission Tool. For this example, we're going to assume that the teacher wants each student to complete answers on a document that she's created as a template. I will start by creating my blend assignment like I normally would, providing some details in the assignment itself and giving it some points here in the settings. Where I'm going to do something different is I'm going to look at the submission type. I'm going to select external tool. Now here I'm going to click the find button to locate the tools that we have in AISD and I'm going to find Google assignment. Right now it still says course kit. This is the tool that was previously known as course kit but this is Google assignment. We're not using cloud assignment. So I'm going to select Google Course Kit or Google Assignment. It's going to give me this window to verify who I am. It will do this for the students as well. And this is a great way to make sure that we're not using a personal Gmail account or something to that effect. So I should see this come up and say connect and share. I'm going to continue because I know this is my Austin ISD account. So Google Assignment has now opened up in a new tab for me. I have some options on here, but the one that I'm going to focus on first is the attachments. This is going to connect documents to this Google Assignment. Whatever I put in here, each student will get their own copy of it. So I'm going to select Attach, and I'm going to go find the documents. You'll see that I can look for my recent documents, I can go to my drive, I can even upload, and this is the only tool we have that will let me pull something from a Google shared drive. So I'm going to select my first document, a semester project, and I'm going to click add. At this point you'll see the document that I've selected and that each student will get a copy. When the students receive this, Google Assignment will append their name to the beginning of this file. This is only going to be a template that will be used by Google Assignment. I can use the Attach button to go select additional files. For example, a spreadsheet or even a Jamboard. If I want to share attachments with students, I must do it at this time. I will not be able to go back in later after publishing this assignment and add more attachments through Google Assignment. Other settings on this page include the plagiarism uh, checker. At this point, Austin ISD does not have an unlimited license for this, and teachers will only be able to use this for three assignments in each course. For the total points, I want to put the same point value that I had in Blend because any grades that I give in Google Assignment 
will automatically pass back to Blend. When I select a due date here, this is just for the students so that if they are turning in the assignment after this date, they will get a message at the top of the window that says late. This date will not pass back to Blend. You will still need to set an assignment date in Blend. For a rubric, I can attach or create within Google Assignment. I've already created one that I'm going to attach to, and it will show up first here in Google Assignment and let me edit it and make any changes I need. But once I have a rubric that I like, I'll click Save and it will be attached to the assignment. Students will see this rubric before they submit their work, and teachers can use this rubric to assess the work and give the grade. Once I am done setting up the Google Assignment, I will click the Create button to return to Blend to finish this process. The Google Assignment has been created and now I click Select to finish this process. It is highly suggested to load this tool in a new tab so that our smaller devices will open up the Google Assignment in a new tab and show the entire page at one time. I will finish setting up my assignment as I normally would and then save my assignment in Blend. Once I have saved this assignment in Blend or, or Canvas, I will see the load button at the bottom of the page. I like to write a note for the students that says click the load button below to remind them to go to this button. When a teacher clicks this button, Google Assignment will open up. You will see the same information that you previously provided. You can click the attachments to see which attachments you have provided, but at this point I cannot add or remove attachments from this assignment. The teacher will not see students in this list until the first student in the class has opened the assignment. Once the assignment has been opened, Google Assignment will create all of the copies for all of the students in your Blend course and save them in the appropriate folder in the student Google Drive. When a student receives the assignment, they will see the load button at the bottom of the page which will connect them to Google Assignment. Because the teacher said to open it in a new tab, I now have a new tab that is opening this assignment. <clears throat> it will take a little while for this very first student to see their Google Assignment because Google Assignment is creating all of the attachments for all students in the course at this time. The student will now see Google Assignment, the points, the due dates within Google Assignment, and all of these attachments. You will see now that Semester Project 2 has the student's name appended to the beginning of it. Each of these documents can now be found inside the student's Google Drive. Google Assignment has created a folder called Assignments and inside that folder, a folder for this course and all of the attachments from this course. You will see that the student can, at some point, add a file. They can add the files from their drive or even upload files, like video files. If they create additional documents, like a new slide, then Google Assignment will be creating this file Again, adding their name to it and storing it in the folder for this course in their Google Drive. For this particular assignment, the teacher added a rubric so the students can see the rubric and each of the components of that rubric. To begin work, the student can open up a document and automatically start working on this document. Again, to prove the point, if you open up the share button, you will see that the teacher and all teachers in this particular blend course already have edit rights. They can view these documents and even leave comments 
uh, and collaborate on the document with the students. The student is the owner and has all edit rights until the student submits the assignment. When the student is done with this assignment, they would click Submit to turn it back into the teacher. Upon submitting this work, all of the Google documents that were submitted have now been changed so that the student only has view rights. They cannot make any edits to these documents until after the teacher has returned the work or the student could click the unsubmit button and get their documents back to continue working on them. For projects that last longer than a class period, the students can always come back to the blend assignment and click the load button at the bottom to again open up the attachments and all of the components of this Google assignment. The teacher will access the Google assignment from the load button at the bottom of the blend page. By seeing the word assigned next to a student's name, that means that the student has been given the documents. By seeing submitted, I know that this student has submitted the work and is ready for grading. I can open up the student's assignment. I can look at all of the files that the student has submitted. And as the grader, if I would like, I can come through here, select a word to leave a comment, and eventually give the student a grade. If I am using the rubric, I can go through my rubric to assign a grade and you will see that the grade points above are automatically adjusting so that this student made a 92 using these rubrics. The overall feedback at the bottom will only be seen by the student when they are looking at Google Assignment. This feedback will not go to SpeedGrader. The grade above will pass back to Blend. When I click the Return button at the very top, it will go from Not Returned to a Score. The student will get a notification that the assignment has been graded and Google Assignment returns editor rights to the student for all of the documents in this assignment. Google Assignment will also give you a history option to view submission histories for this particular Google Assignment. As the teacher, I can select this drop down to see my roster, or I can use the arrows to look at each of the students in this class. To return to the Google Assignment, I can click the arrow button at the very top left to see my roster again. It's important to know that if I have multiple sections in my blend course, all students will be in one roster in Google Assignment. I will not be able to select just first period students from this page. However, if I open up SpeedGrader for this assignment, I do have the option to view each of the sections like I would in any other blend assignment. The message that the student does not have a submission means that this student has not submitted their work in Google Assignment. This particular student has submitted their work, and while I do not see the work live in SpeedGrader, the link above will take me back to Google Assignment, where I can find that student and open up their work. There are many benefits to using Google Assignment, or Google Course Kit. Teachers should feel welcome to start using Google Assignment now, and if you need support, reach out to your technology design coach or your campus innovation coach for more resources.